And welcome to the 30th, wow, 30th episode of Bird Noises, presented by Bose, an Atlanta Falcons podcast about football and mostly everything else, or as digital director Dan Gad says, or likes to say, because Falcons are birds and birds make noises. All right. <laughs> now that we've given some love to the sponsor and Dan Gad, let's get to our next guest. He is an NFL insider for CBS Sports and a senior writer for CBSSports.com. Before that, he was the Washington football team beat writer for the Washington Post for six years, and he served as the NFL Network's insider. Baltimore Nave can be seen every Sunday during the season on the NFL Today. Jason Lockenfora, my friend. We've got a lot of topics we're going to hit today, including Terry Fontenot, Arthur Smith, the Falcons' new regime in place. What does Jason think of that pairing and their short-term and long-term success? We're going to talk a little bit about the NFL draft, what the Falcons might do. We're going to talk about some NFL rumors and some things that could happen between now and draft day around the league, including the Falcons. But first, welcome to Bird Noises. What's going on? You may hear some dog noises. I'm being co-opted here by, uh, by hey, Copper. Hey, Bird Noises, dog noises. But uh, no, thanks Thanks for having me. I'll try to keep the dog noises to a minimum. And, and we do get a lot of action in this tree uh, right like behind it. me. So we may, get, we may get some ambient sound bird noises as well. That's perfect. What do you, what do you think yeah. of that name, Jason? Bird noises. It works for me, man. I that's I, I like it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Two thumbs up. Two all wings. Right. Wow. Up. Yeah. Two wings up. There we go. Uh, all right. So just to kind of figure out where your headspace is right about now, I like to do a little rapid fire. Okay. So I'm going to say five words or phrases, and you just okay. tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. It's a dangerous and, game, Beaker. I know. I know. And so we have you know beeps and everything like that. So okay. All right. Matt Ryan. Uh, I don't want to say the first thing that popped in my in my head. Uh, all things must end eventually. The new or coming NFL TV deal. Oh, uh, straight cash, homie. <laughs> Deshaun Watson in 2021. New beginnings. Wow. The NFC South. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. I'll go with that. <laughs> um, well, you know what? I've only had a sip of my coffee, but I don't need any now. This is good. Uh, the Falcons at number four. Trade up, down, or stay put? I, I think at the end of the day, they, they stay put. Um, okay. Are we, this okay. is still rapid fire mode. I, I won't elaborate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to get into that. All right. All right. Good stuff. Um, so Jason, you've obviously fired or obviously followed, geez, all the hirings and firings with the GMs and coaches uh, this off season. Um, before we get into the Falcons, which moves surprised you the most? Could be GM or coach or both. You don't have to. You don't have to go deep in the weeds over. It, but were there yeah, just a no, couple head I scratchers? Mean, look, the, the the Texans uh, search was bizarre um, by any standard. Uh, you basically mm -hmm. had a lot of money and apparent power given to a team president and a search firm, and you basically had the owner. <laughs> doing a parallel search on his own that involved one GM candidate and a head coach who certainly at that time wasn't, they hired a guy who neither search really was sort of originally geared to get to. And they obviously went to war with their quarterback in the middle of it. Um, yeah, that, I mean, David Cully getting this first opportunity to be a head coach under those circumstances coming off a year in which the Ravens passing attack as someone who lives in Baltimore was under attack all year. Uh, and now he becomes a head coach in those circumstances. I don't think many saw that coming, including Cal McNair and the Houston Texans themselves, but that's how it ended up. 
Uh, all right, let's jump into the Falcons. I thought maybe you might go up to Detroit um, and start talking about kneecaps, but let's go. Um, <laughs> they're delicious this time of year, I hear. I think this is, we're now entering peak knee. Like if you're a kneecap hunter, this is your time. <laughs> let's hope they're in, good. They're, they're extra yeah, tasty in early spring, let, just, just before the spring. Yeah, that's unfortunate because they need to be in season in the fall, right? Um, yeah, that's going to be a problem. One of many. So, Falcons, what do you think of these two moves? What do you think of Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith? You know, Arthur Smith was the one candidate that was on everybody's list. Yep. Terry Fontenot, uh, first-time GM, but kind of came up under Mickey Loomis. What do you think of these two hires? Um, look, I had heard Terry Fontenot's name very, very early in the process, and I knew he's someone who they thought highly of. Um, but then I talked to a lot of people in the know as well. Once the rule came into effect, the, you know, the adaptations to the Rooney rule and the idea of compensation. And mm -hmm. there were a lot of people in the league who thought that might give the Falcons pause because let's face it. I don't have to tell you guys about the rivalry with the saints and yep. the Saints being in salary cap hell and the saints needing additional draft picks more than ever. And the potential to get two top 100 ish picks over the next couple of years. That's, that's a thing like that's yeah that's a that that's an unusual circumstance that would be germane to this hypothetical or potential hire that wouldn't matter as much to a team that was hiring a coach from the other coast and the other conference for instance right but right. obviously you know their process led them to that conclusion and you know i, I to try to handicap these things it, it is impossible I know. you know, I know. Um, which ones are going to work, which ones aren't going to work. Um, I will just say this, they, they have their work cut out for them. You know, I, I think this is a team that um, you walk into some situations and a lot of the dirty work's already been done, right? They've already cut the cord with some players who the battle of the heart versus the mind. What, what is he now? What do I see him as in my mind's eye? What is his compensation now? What is his future compensation going to be? Is he ascending or descending, right? Sometimes you walk into situations where those decisions have already been made by the previous regime before they're let go. So I think this is, you know, this is a, a tricky little wicket that they're walking into because to me, this is a team that didn't really fully embrace what it was, what it was or where it was trending for a while. And I always go back to my econ 101 opportunity cost. What, it's not just the move you make, but it's the potential ramifications of the moves you didn't make, which right, they're right. not walking into a situation where they have all these additional picks because the fact's been trimmed and guys were traded while they still had some value. Um, they don't have a great cap situation. They don't have a treasure trove of picks that some other teams do. So um, there's certainly a lot of work to be done. Yeah, they've, they've got to get in compliance with the cap. They've got six picks right now jace and you know probably a couple compensatory picks mm -hmm. in a way though you got to think you know it's kind of a good thing that they get to make those decisions with you know say a matt ryan and julio jones and some of those some of those moves because then it's you know they can't say well we would have done this or we would have done that um i guess you can look at it that way too right that they it's uh, you know they you they could. hold the keys and you, you, you could um truly do it their way yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, okay. I, I guess if you were looking to get maximum compensation, you know, I, I think, yeah. well, with Matt, you're not, you're not going to be able to trade that contract. I mean, that is what it is at this point. And even with Julio, with the way that contract set up down the road, you'd probably just be inclined to, to keep him and see what he looks like at age 33 or whatever. Um, but, I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. But would these guys have even done the last extension? You know what I mean? Or would that have been maybe the time to trade them and you're drafting Ridley or whatever? So, yeah, and look, they have an owner who understands the situation. He knows they're not walking into um, a, a rebuild that's already been set up for them. And here's your here's all your additional picks and here's all your cap space and go do whatever you want. I, I think they will get that carte blanche blank check. Um, excuse the pun from from Arthur Blank at the appropriate time. But to me, this is a team that still has some tearing down to do before it really builds up. 
When you think about, you know, that we keep hearing about the short-term plan, long-term plan for sustained success, uh, you know, obviously everybody that interviewed for these jobs have to come in and present, hey, this is how we can win now. Mm -hmm. This is how we win long-term. Just, you know, you've covered the league so long, you know, it, even when you have a situation like this, you, you can't predict, but with the core players they have, uh, you know, there's, there may, it remains to be, it remains to be seen, you know, what happens with some other players like Alex Mack and, and that kind of thing. But do you think that the core is there if they draft, right? Is there a chance that they can you know, especially with the expanded, you know, playoff format, sneak in and win enough games. And they've been a seven and nine team two years. They lost 10 games last year by a score or less. I mean, you could, you are what you are, but is there a chance that they can come in and compete and possibly be competitive this first year in your mind? Realistically. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it depends on how you, how you define compete. Could they be playing games in December? Yeah, that that's what I mean. Have yeah. a ramification to be in the mix for the extra wild card spot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of teams are going to be in that boat. Um, is this a team that I think is poised to go on a run of a bunch of division titles and start ascending, you know, wild card championship game, Super Bowl? Not that it always works that way anyway, but no, I, you know what I mean? I, I, yep. I don't think so, but this is going to be another unusual year. We don't know the off season rules quite yet. Um, you know, fans, no fans. Will that be the same across the board? Will it be different based on, you know, geography and local government? So that there's a lot of variables, um, but okay. it's a, it, look, there's in a league of that strives for parity the the field of what constitutes parity has been expanded you know by the additional game and by the additional playoff um so yeah i mean sure could they be in the hunt for something in a wild card they could um but I, i'll just be fascinated to see the decisions they make and how because that there's a there can be a lot of fool's gold in that stuff you know what i mean so like yeah. are you chasing that and, and, and walking away from opportunities to shed salary, to pick up a pick, even if it's a, a lower pick, and really build for the future, you know, which it's hard to mine both those, both parts of that garden at once. And yeah, because you don't want to be, you don't want to be selling the message that, hey, we're kicking the can down the road and, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're not, we're not trying to compete, but at the same time, you want to be in a position for, where you can really build this thing. Yeah. Like if, if yeah. you're around 500 and somebody's peddling whatever, a guard that you think's an upgrade, who's got one year left on his contract, you know what I mean? Are you trading third and fourth round picks to try to subsidize, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mediocrity mm -hmm. and then parting with a, you know what I mean? An asset that could provide five years, four years of extreme value on a rookie contract and maybe play 10 years you know, in the league. So, you know, that, where are they, if they, if they are at like, to your theory, in the hunt, in an expanded hunt, are they, you know what I mean? Are they still playing the long game or do you start playing the short game? Right, 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 right. I'm just trying to give them hope, Jason. Just trying to give them hope here. I'm um, not, to, I'm, I, I'm not I'm, I'm, I don't know the answer to those questions, but that, you know, if, if <laughs> yeah. those will be little inflection points you know, yep. when, when roster cut downs are happening, there's all these dudes on the street, you know, which way are they going trade deadline? Which way are they going? It's going to be interesting too, because we, there is no cap number set yet. Right. We know, we know what the, the minimum is going to be. And so that's going to be really fascinating too, to see like how many of these guys are going to be take like these one year prove it deals, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to pick, you know, where, what situations are going to be best for them where they can cash in after a season. Yeah. So I think the teams that really do their work there could really benefit too. Um, yeah, like you said, it's going to be fascinating to watch. Um, what are your thoughts on the NFC South? Again, just, you know, there's so many unknowns. We don't know what the yeah. Panthers are going to do at quarterback. Yeah. We don't know what the saints are going to do at quarterback. We know what Brady just did you know, with restructuring, 
Um, how do you see, what, what are your just general thoughts about the NFC South right now? I, I think it's, it's Tampa and everybody else. Um, you know, as we speak, Tom Brady is working on a renegotiation slash extension. That's going to free up a lot of cap space for the box. Um, they have, a, a, and he won't be the only guy who probably ends up taking, you know, less than he could get if he played it out to the fullest on the open market um, mm -hmm. than what he's willing to take in Tampa. You know, the Gronk will be back and it'll be, you know, at a deal that everybody can live with. Um, AB will likely be back and he's not breaking the bank either. And there's a lot of teams that wouldn't even bring him in no matter what. So his market's right, already right. constricted, you know? And Dominic and Sue seems to really like Florida and the no state income tax and another year at 8 million might be just right for him. So I think that's a team that's in keep it together mode. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they, and, and they're going to probably, they're going to slap a tag on somebody, whether it's Godwin or Shaq Barrett, they may lose some people, Levante, David, they, they may lose some people, but they've also drafted pretty well recently. Yeah. And you know, they, they got the growing pains out of the way. They know what Brady is. He knows what they are. Um, that's a good point. Yeah, that's they, a really good they point. They melded the scheme. Oh, There's some bird noises. Dog uh, noises. Yeah, it's trash day, so I know he hears, <laughs> know he hears the trash truck. You know, the Saints, uh, they're obviously in transition. Everything's cyclical, like we said at the beginning. Everything eventually has its end. Um, yep. Can they be better with Jameis? And if, if they keep Jameis, and I think they will, you know, does this thing with Breeze get a little messy if he decides he really wants to come back? Um, Do you think there's any chance he comes back? I don't think there's a market for Drew Breeze. Yeah. I, I, I don't. Um, including really in, in New Orleans at this point. Um, but they're, they've got to reimagine themselves. Uh, and, and their credit card bills are due. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and we know Atlanta's in a transition and the Panthers are in year two of a, of a new regime, but really year one from a front office standpoint, right? Cause they let Marty Herney go in season and, um, you know, mix their front office up. So that they're still a rebuilding team. I mean, they're not in contending mode that that owner will start spending big money on them this year, I suspect, but that's not a team that um, even if they get a Deshaun Watson, I mean, it would help, but, but, if they get to Sean Watson, they're probably robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like Burns, see ya. We want him as part of the package. Chin, that's a really useful hybrid defender. Yeah, we want him and a bunch of first round picks. So I, yeah, that I was think the rumor, right? That they wanted two ones and some defensive starters or something like that. I thought. No, I mean, look, Tepper will be willing to do a lot to get to Sean Watson. Um, I would not discount their chances, but again, you're, you're going to be stripping away a lot of assets. It's not just going to be picks. It would be players too. So that's why I think Tampa is trying to keep a known commodity together. And I think they're going to be pretty successful doing that. Everybody else is in some degree of, you know, tear down or rebuild. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting stuff there. Uh, so when it comes to the cap and I'm not going to, you know, well, we kind of covered that. It's going to be really interesting to see what these teams do as far as like when the, when the number is actually set. Are you hearing anything as far as when we can expect it? Do you think it's going to happen before March 17th? Um, probably. But it, yeah, probably. But it, it wouldn't absolutely positively have to. I mean, the thing is like. Do you know it's going to, you know, it's going to go up in, eventually? What's that? I mean, you look at the deal last night, Dak Prescott. I mean, there. I know we know the number is going to be down this year, but beyond that, are are they thinking? Yeah, there'll be growth. I mean, these TV new yeah. TV deals will start kicking in. Um, you know, other expanded revenue streams, whatever. You know, they they've only stuck their toe in the gambling pool in terms of sponsorships, and you know, as sports wagering becomes legal in more and more states, you're going to have. You've already have some arenas where there's brick and mortar sports books right there mm -hmm. what revenue streams look like over time will teams have their own gambling apps as well 
Mm. So, yes, I think the, the arrow is trending. And then, you know, people are getting vaccinated for this horrible virus. And, you know, hopefully the worst of that is over. So, yeah, there's a lot of economic um, trends that are pointing up for the league. Uh, and I think okay. a lot is made of the cap probably too much. Like, you know, if it ends up being 188 or 185. Right. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so maybe that cost you a swing tackle if you've projected the wrong way and you got a little less than you thought. But th so many of these contracts are fungible anyway. You, you can create mm -hmm. cap space where you want it. If you're an owner who's willing to go cash over cap and you think you're close to winning, whether it comes in at 185 or 192, at the end of the day, macro level is not not a huge difference you know and again they all know that it's going up in the future so you can structure deals so that hey in 2023 you're going to get a lump sum payment of 50 million bucks it's fully guaranteed at the time of signing right now for injury skill and cap but we don't want to take that cap we want to delay that cap hit for a couple of years i mean patrick mahomes did a deal last year right where he's only making 60 million dollars the first three years and they got Chris Jones, right? And they, so where there's a will, there's what a will. You, quick general thoughts on that deal last night that Prescott and the Cowboys agreed to. I mean, no trade clause, no more uh, tagging. It's, a, it's, it's kind of for a player. That's kind of like the perfect contract, right? He got everything he wanted a year ago. Guaranteed. Except, except more. You know, yeah. He got everything. He got everything, like all the parameters that he wanted a year ago. Less than five years, no future tag. Um, he was willing to do that a year ago for 33 a year. He's now getting it all that same stuff in a year where he got hurt, barely played, yeah. and he's doing it at a price point of 40 versus 33. So there's people trying to tell me that this is a win-win or that the Cowboys, I'm like, well, no, they had this player the whole time. You could have got him for 28 a year two years ago. You could have got him for 33 yeah. a year 11 months ago. And you're paying him 40 while he's coming off a season ending injury and your offensive line's getting worse and the cap is yeah. not going to yeah. be what it's supposed to be this year. And your yep. defense still stinks. Well, you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't really build a contender while he's making $300,000 a year, but yeah, the cap's going up, but now he's making 40 and all these other assets who were on team friendly deals are either not even worth that money anymore, or, or they're just breaking down physically. Yeah. And the running back, another year, 300 odd touches, that it eventually catches yeah. up to you. From what Tread, the treads. To. Yeah. The treads so, are wearing down there. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I think the Cowboys, uh, and, and that they had to do it. Like if he's your yeah. guy, he's going to cost you $40 million under these circumstances. Yeah. That really wasn't in doubt because the worst case for him is he plays it out for 38 and, and now he's made $70 million for two. And it's either the third tag or he walks and he hits the market. At, yeah. at the very time the cap should start exploding again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the other thing too. I mean, when this deals up, he's only going to be 31. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's wrap this up. Let's get some bold predictions from you. Uh, let's talk about Watson really quick. Will he be traded? Yes or no? Yes. Wow. Yep. Wow. That's crazy. Just to think about that. Um, will the Falcons draft a quarterback? Yeah, I don't, I don't see how you don't, even if it's a developmental guy, a mid-round guy. Um, but, you know, if certain people fall, there could be a case to be made in the second round as well. I don't think they're going to do it at four um, unless somebody yeah. doesn't take yeah. a quarterback. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm assuming you could have quarterbacks one, two, three. If it's something other than that, then that's a different scenario. Okay. Uh, how many more years do you see Matt and Julio Jones playing together? One. So this could be the farewell tour, you're saying? Well, I, I think if, if you're a new regime and you did not, you're not invested in that quarterback, you're not emotionally invested in him, you weren't sitting there watching the Super Bowl that they almost won as a, as a, as a member of that organization. You weren't there for draft day. You didn't work them out at BC. You know what I mean? You don't have that sweat mm -hmm. equity. Right? You, you've got to come in and be cold hearted, calculated um, decision makers. Cause otherwise you're not going to do what's in the best interest of yourself and the football team. And you look at the inflection points in that contract. And when the pendulum starts finally swinging in a way where 
it's it's less cumbersome to let go than to keep if we don't think he's our guy for the next three years and somebody else needs to start getting those reps because we think that person is going to be an ascending player for us and and we need to start taking some lumps with him in 21 or 20 in 22 so that by 23 mm-hmm. we're where we want to be father time is undefeated and if you look at the quarterbacks yeah. of his cohort tom brady's on another plane like he's a freaking day. like that's whatever he's a he's an alien but everybody else the flacco's the roethlisberger's the eli mannings the philip rivers that's not drew Brees. that's that's shaky ground yeah when you last question and when you and I just started thinking about teams that need a quarterback right now in, in my head, but is there an offseason move that you think could happen or you you've heard things or in discussions it's kind of come up that could happen that no one is really expecting or talking about right now? <sighs> What would be, you know, in your mind, kind of surprise people, but not really surprising to you when you think about maybe some of these teams that still need a quarterback? I'm thinking of Chicago. I'm thinking of New England, possibly. I'm thinking of San Francisco. I mean, the Jimmy G well, thing's not really, yeah. uh, there's rumors about that, but is well, there anything out there that you're hearing? There are teams that are not settled on their quarterback. Um, even though he's a veteran and even though he makes a lot of money and even though he might be deemed to be in his prime, and even if he's been fairly successful, you know, like uh, David, uh, David Carr or Garoppolo, mm-hmm. th- those, those teams, they don't just have one eye on everything else that's going around. They basically have two eyes. Like we got this guy in our back pocket, but we got, we're, we're our heads on a swivel for opportunities to upgrade through the draft, through free agency or through trades. Right. And then there, if, if those moves are made, then there's a trickle-down effect, you know? Mm-hmm. If the Raiders trade for Russell Wilson, but Seattle's not interested in Derek Carr, uh, you know, they'd rather call him David Carr before. So they're not interested in Derek That's Carr. Right. Mm-hmm. Then does Derek Carr get traded to the Washington football team in order for to have more assets to include in a Russell Wilson trade? Um, maybe Seattle's interested in Mariota in the other end of that thing. Okay, but now we've got Russell Wilson and Carr. So where is Carr going? And I'll go back to, to Washington. Um, if Kyle Shanahan's able to get to Sean Watson, and I don't know that they're going to have the draft capital to do it. Um, I don't know that they match up as a trade partner as well as, you know, potentially Carolina or, or, or Miami mm-hmm. or some other teams. But then does Garoppolo go back to New England? So I think this thing's kind of going to happen in waves, and the first wave is kind of settled. Um but there'll be another wave coming probably closer to the draft that could have, I mean, I, I like if, if you told me there was a three-way trade involving at least two current NFL starting quarterbacks and two arguably top 10 quarterbacks, depending That's on how pressure. much you value, you know, completion percentage and some of the things that Carr really excels at, I, I wouldn't flinch if you told me that okay. there was a three-way trade before the draft that had two top end NFL starters changing addresses. I wouldn't flinch. There you go. All right. Jason locking for her. Man, it's great seeing you, man. Likewise, buddy. Glad everything. Oh, yeah, he knows hey, what's on Copper. <laughs> right on cue. Copper noises. This is now. There we go. Noises. We've renamed oh, this, we uh, this episode. Podcast. All right, Jason. Thanks so much.